So what's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today, hopefully on the coupe, I'm going to be doing the rear calipers. Or the rear caliper on the left, should I say. And maybe doing something else as well. This might be like a multiple video day. Fingers crossed, I'm not sure because the weather, as you can see, is not happy at the moment. It's raining on and off, or trying its best to um, rain constantly. So, fingers crossed we can get the caliper on the rear left swapped. It's lasted me just over a year since I've freed it off and done all the slides and sort of wound the caliper back and tried to free it up a bit. So, it definitely worked, but it did need a rebuild. And I thought, right, let's just get a new caliper. The slides will be fine, the caliper carrier will be fine where the pads sit. The pads will be nice and loose still. I know it's the piston within the caliper, so that's why we're replacing that today. So the weather's turned to rubbish already. Just chucking it down. But I've got the car packed up at my dad's, ready to go. And now we just need to do a few things before we start taking the car apart and getting this rear caliper off. The first thing you want to do is put the car in first and let the handbrake off so that the rear brake isn't clamped on to the disc and it's free to remove. The next thing you want to do is jack the car up and use an axle stand so that the car's safe and easy to work on. Now one thing I would say is you want to break your wheel nuts off before you jack the car up and take the wheel off of the floor. That makes it easier to break them off. You don't want to take them completely out obviously, but you do want to just loosen them slightly. Thankfully though, I have a gun, so I'll be using this to just gun them off nice and easy. Oh, also make sure you have your locking wheel nut key. Burr, 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 burr. So next thing, now the wheel's off, you want to use a 10mm on a couple of bolts just to get this brake caliper shield off. Then we want to try and get the caliper slide bolt out. Also hammer these off, which are the um, locating screws for the rear disc to centralise the disc. And then once we've got the slide bolts out and the caliper's sort of removed so we can get the disc and the pads out, we're then going to get the rear caliper fully removed from the handbrake cable. We clamp the uh, we then clamp the brake line, the brake flexi, and uh, unbolt the brake line from the brake caliper, and then swap it over. And that should be everything, um, right up until the point where we need to then get um, two people on the job, really, and bleed the new brake caliper. So that's the plan of action, in a nutshell. First thing, caliper shield off. This shouldn't happen, and it, hopefully it won't happen to you, but unfortunately it's happened to me. In removing the discs, the locating screws for the disc, they are sort of chamfered so that the screw aligns the disc perfectly centrally to the hub and um, has a perfect contact all the way around the disc on the caliper. Anyway, these screws became seized. This one's still seized. I've been hammering the crap out of them, <laughs> and I even swapped hammers this much much larger hammer perspective of a big hammer to a very big hammer and I've been using this which is a specifically made um, Phillips 3 that's steel all the way through it's made to hammer and shock out screws like this very very useful in situations like this but it didn't work so what I ended up doing was putting a lot of pressure on this to not strip the threads or to not strip the, the head, sorry, and um, use the spanner to get a bit more leverage on turning that screw out of the disc. And it worked, so I'm just gonna do it on the next one there now. To do this, by the way, I've got the handbrake on. I've just put the handbrake on again momentarily just while I'm doing this, just to keep the disc still so that I can get as much leverage on this as possible. Thank you. 
So that's the two caliper slide bolts out as you can see. These two bolts here are in parallel with the slides on the carrier. So that should allow us to remove the caliper once we've unclipped the handbrake cable and then removed the brake line which is just here on this nut. Now I've just put the top caliper slide bolt back in because what I want to try and do is get this sort of C-clip just here. If you can see that, this C-clip just here off of the handbrake cable. See that there just in the centre of the screen? I know that the lighting's not very good. But yeah, that's the handbrake cable here that sort of goes to this rubberized section there. It's finding it really hard to focus. <laughs> but yeah, so this C-clip here needs to come out so we can remove the handbrake cable which goes to the caliper there on this arm and I'll be then using this clamp here on the brake line on the brake flexi which is just here and goes underneath there and sort of curls round as you might be able to see so yeah that's the next couple of steps I'm going to crack on with those now Came off a bit easier than expected. Now this has a little clip in it and then a pin that goes through. Don't know if you can see that just there. There you go. So this is the back of the caliper now. It's just got this little circlip here. There you go. Pulled that out there. And then there's a pin that goes through this here. Now finally, I can get the brake line off now that it's clamped and that this is out. So as you can see, the brake line, or the handbrake line, should I say handbrake cable, is off. The brake flexi, the fluid line, is also off. And um, what I've done is I've put the top bolt just back in just again, just to hold it in place, because what I'm going to do, instead of taking this handbrake cable section off completely, um, which is just there, look, it's on like a metal bracket, and it actually bolts just to the back of the caliper there, with those two bolts. Now, that part that the handbrake cable goes through does come with the new caliper, but this is pretty much seized into this metal section here, this metal bracket, and it's only two bolts, two 12mm bolts, to take this bracket off of the caliper itself. So I'm gonna take these two bolts out, leave the handbrake cable sat in that little metal bracket and put the new caliper on with the old little metal bracket here that holds the handbrake cable, rather than trying to wrestle the handbrake cable um, out of that corroded bracket. I think that would be the easier, quicker move. If you are in a situation like this though and you can't separate the caliper like this, you will have to try and remove the caliper and, and bracket from the handbrake cable. But I'm going to take the easy route because I have the option here on this particular Honda. And just for a better visual representation, it's that bracket there in the centre of the screen that I'm referring to. As you can see the cable goes through that hole there and it's just not worth trying to break it free and trying to get it out. I might end up damaging the handbrake cable itself on the car. So I'm just going to undo these two bolts and put the old bracket onto this nice new caliper. And just like that, it's completely off. Now, I did put the caliper slide bolts back in, just to hold the caliper in place while I did that, because they were two quite tough bolts to get out, but once they cracked off and freed up, they were uh, nice and easy, and this bracket just came off really, really easy. This'll go nicely back onto the, uh, the new caliper. So yeah, we just whip this caliper off now, swap them over, bolt everything back up, and uh, I am going to replace as well, because it's best practice to do so when you're changing out the caliper to replace the rear discs and pads. Not necessary, but definitely best practice and necessary in my particular um, application because the pad has crapped itself. There was quite a bit of meat left on these and that's why I didn't replace them. I remember people saying, why don't you just change the pads while you're freeing off your caliper carrier and, and pads and your slides and I, I didn't replace the pads because one, there's plenty of meat left on them and two, um, 
I didn't have new discs and pads. I remember one guy saying, oh, your discs and pads are so cheap, why don't you just replace them? Well, they're not cheap if you get decent discs and pads. Like, I've got some Brembo pads. I'll be replacing the discs with some Mintex discs. I think they're in the passenger footwell. So, you know, I've, and I've got slightly larger brakes than normal. Oh, no, I haven't, sorry, these are the standard brakes on this particular Civic. I've got a couple of Civics. But I wouldn't be replacing the rear... Um, discs on this particular car because I mean I, I wouldn't want that expense if I didn't need it there's no lip on these discs they just look very very corroded and the pads as I say had plenty of meat on anyway I digress I don't like to spend eight pound on a set of pads I would rather prefer to replace the discs and the pads together and if you don't have any reason to do so and have that extra expense then you wouldn't would you that's how garages operate there's nothing wrong with it, it's just people have, I think, higher standards than some. I don't know. Anyway, caliper, swap it out. The crap click, but now you can see the caliper is temporarily mocked up. It moves nice and easy on the slide, so I know that they aren't the problem. It was indeed the piston within the caliper, as we previously diagnosed, was very, very stiff, and it's just come to the end of its life. It, if refurbished, it would be perfectly fine. But yeah, that will now live in this box and we'll call it the box of shame <laughs> but this is temporarily mocked up as you can see I've not replaced the disc yet I did just give the disc a quick hammer though because it was stuck on I wanted to make sure that I could get that off before going any further um, but yeah I've just put it on temporarily to get those two um, bolts out there just in the centre of the screen for that bracket so that we can put the old bracket onto it so that is the next step now we're just going to whip that bracket off of this particular caliper and just start mocking things up and then we can sort of push that caliper out of the way to get the caliper carrier off that's the bit that the caliper bolts to on the caliper slides the carrier and uh, get the disc swapped out for a new one so that's the caliper back off bolted up with the new handbrake or should i say the old handbrake bracket and cable onto the new caliper and the caliper's out of the way so that we can get to these two bolts here and then one just down there the centre of the screen so that holds the carrier on once those two are undone the carrier will come off the disc will come off to replace those as previously mentioned and then we can get everything bolted back up together now I will say right now that while you're bolting everything back together make sure that you are competent at doing this sort of stuff or you know very confident in being able to get things like the correct torques for the bolts the specific bolts that hold your brakes on for example you want all the torques to be in spec or to exceed spec slightly <laughs> if you are used to doing this sort of stuff you'll know what I mean by saying that um, we call it EFT extra effing tight <laughs> just to make sure but yeah if you uh, are unsure get yourself a torque wrench find the manufacturers torque specifications for things like the caliper carrier the caliper slides all that sort of stuff and make sure that everything is done properly if you aren't confident in doing this sort of stuff or if it is indeed your first time one down another one to go now what I had to do was I had to get the ratchet on the nut and then while the ratchet was in that sort of a position, I literally pushed it whilst hammering the end <laughs> to try and unseize that particular ball. I knew, with it being a 14, I knew there was a very little chance of me doing that, even on a long handle ratchet. Little chance of me doing that causing any problems with it stripping or snapping the ball, and because there wasn't enough leverage, I'd rather try and shock it free and risk damaging my ratchet then snap it off in there because that would be very difficult to drill out and try and sort of re-tap it or drill it out and, and try and preserve the threads and get the remain remnants of the uh, bolt out but yeah this is coming off nice and easy now it's been freed off so I'm gonna whip that out of the bottom get this caliper carrier off get the disc swapped put the new fresh disc on get the carrier back on and we're reversing the entire process now so that will be nice putting it back together because it means that we passed the halfway point the next time you see this it'll have a new disc on with the carrier back on because we are now at the very very boring point of um, getting everything reversed and put back together Let's see if we can whip this off now while the camera's rolling there we go two and a carrier at this point as well what you want to be doing if necessary is cleaning 
these sort of um, mating surfaces. So these caliper slides have been recently done, as per my last video. And these surfaces here that meet the caliper carrier and that side of the carrier, or that way. You want to make sure that these are perfectly smooth and flat and clean so that the brake carrier holds the caliper on the disc perfectly flat and so that you don't get uneven wearing of your brake pads and brake discs. And uh, feel free to check your brake, yeah, your uh, wheel bearing at this point. Not bad. A few moments later. So I've double checked everything, I've mounted up the carrier, I've placed the pads in place and remember the rear pad will have the sound sort of warning, the wear indicator warning sort of piece of metal sort of uh, riveted onto it. That goes behind the uh, disc in this particular application so that would go there just like that. I've also put a little bit of the ceramic brake grease just on where the pads touch the caliper carrier and the brake pad shims. Replace the um, brake slide rubber seals, made sure that they're nice and free. So now, now that the pads are in place, the caliper has also got the anti-rattle sort of shim on it there. Now we just need to bob this over. Just holding the caliper in place, put the caliper slide bolts in, just get a few threads on that one, bottom one. Then you will have to sort of push the caliper on a bit because it's got the, uh, the anti rattle shim sort of spring, sort of pushing the pads. So you do have to sort of push the caliper on quite a bit. Then it's going to be attaching the handbrake cable and attaching the brake fluid line there. And obviously, you know that you've got the right side, you do anyway with this particular caliper because the handbrake mechanism's in the top but you know you've got the right side caliper because the bleed nipple will always be to the top of the caliper and the piston within the caliper otherwise you wouldn't be able to bleed it so anyway I'm going to tighten all this back up now and uh, next time you see this we'll be ready to bleed I think so this is it all complete, all done, ready to bleed now as I say you'll need two people to bleed it, the disc shield's back on, everything's tight, everything's ready to go, new pads, new discs, new caliper. So we shouldn't have any issues now with the caliper sticking and that is how you replace a caliper. The next and the last thing on the list is to bleed it and the idea behind that is, is that you will loosen this bleed nipple, press the brake pedal within the car, keep the pedal depressed, tighten the bleed nipple again, let the brake pedal come back up, release the bleed nipple, press the brake pedal again and repeat that process until no air comes out of the brake line and then you know that the fluid has been bled through to the piston itself so you don't get a spongy pedal feel. And you want to make sure that you top up your brake fluid as and when required throughout that process to make sure that you aren't feeding and introducing more air into the brake system as a whole. And that's that in a nutshell. I'm not gonna go through the brake bleeding process in depth or I'll show you how to do it. There's plenty of videos on that. That's how to replace a caliper though, in a nutshell.